policies. Quick story, when we started off, we Googled a lot of human resource policies and we found like a ton of stuff. And then we realized we don't have to do all of them, so we're just doing a small portion of it. So I'm going to be talking about overtime and meal rest breaks, emergency closings, and holidays. Bree will then go to vacation, family medical leave, jury duty, bereavement. Heather will talk about attendance, job performance, social media use, computer, internet, and other resources. And then Gab will talk about harassment, compliance procedure, conflict of interest, paychecks, and dress code. Now over here, I put a little information about me before I started. So over there, that's Jazz Hands Dance Academy. That's where I work right now. These babies are not mine. Clarify that. That's my niche. And I think these are not going 20 minutes. 20 seconds. Is it going 20 seconds? Oh, wow. Okay. So who's here is 21? Who here knows Hops and Grace? Okay, so I worked there for two years, so I have a lot of stories to tell about that, and I don't work there, so I can talk about it. So now we'll talk about emergency closing. So emergency closings happen when there's usually over one foot of snow that falls, electricity is out, heat in the winter is not available, flooding affects commute, or officials declare a weather emergency where they ask for people to stay off road. So when your governor says you can't go into school because the roads are too slippery or something. So this is hops and grapes, snowstorm, fun story right now. That was a snowstorm in my backyard, fun. So we had a snowstorm, hops and grapes never closes. The only time hops and grapes closes is Christmas day. And we had a lady come in on a huge snowstorm saying, you know, it's slippery out in your like front area, so you should probably like clean that up. And she asked my manager and she asked my, she told me and our boss said we're closing immediately. So what to do in an emergency when there's flooding, you have to call your supervisor right away, no matter what. Um, employees deemed non-essential have the option of taking annual leave or personal leave. And if non-exempt, leave without pay. So non-exempt and exempt, Here's some examples. So an exempt employee is someone with a fixed income, full-time employee, so it's your manager, your supervisor. Non-exempt employee is someone who works hourly. So it could be someone like you who works part-time, who works $10 an hour, $9 an hour. So emergency closing with pay, employees with non-essential job duties are compensated at their regular rate of pay for the hours they would have worked. Non-exempt employees with essential jobs are compensated one half times regular pay for an emergency closing. Exempt essential employees may be granted compensatory time off for hours work. Whew, losing my breath here. Employees on sick and personal leave, if you're on sick or personal leave on the day of the emergency closing, that's what you're getting. You don't get any pay, you just get that time off that you um, requested. So overtime. Who's heard of overtime? You know what overtime is? So it's when it's the pay you get when you exceed 40 hours per work week. So I have time and a half. So there are certain types of overtime pay. There's straight time rate, which is one and a half times your regular pay rate. Premium rate, which is the half of the one and a half. So if you work $10 an hour, you work the 41 hours a week, which is the overtime, the premium rate is $5, because it's the half of the 10. So overtime based on company policies, even if you aren't entitled to overtime pay, you can still get other benefits. Um, example, being paid time and a half before working 40 hours or working holidays or weekends. Other companies count paid breaks towards hours worked, which leads me to meal and rest breaks. Now, New Jersey does not require employees 18 and over, employers 18 and over to provide meal and rest breaks. I'll get to that in another slide. Under federal law, employers must pay for hours worked if an employee has to work through a meal. So if you're a receptionist like I am and you have to work through lunch, you get paid for that. Or if you're on the job working as a handyman and you go quick, get a quick bite of McDonald's on your way from one job to another, you get paid during that time. It's not a break. Now, federal law also requires to pay for short breaks. 
So it's five to 20 minutes. If you exceed 30 minutes, your employers do not have to pay for bona fide meal breaks. Bona fide is the 30 minutes. So it's not really a right, like what I was saying. Federal law does not require your employers to pay for your breaks. They don't have to. But of course they do because everyone needs a break. And if you know, if you're not eating, you're just going to be cranky and you're just not going to work very well at all. Uh, so at my job, dad's hands, I only work four hour shifts. So I don't really get a meal break. I just eat a snack at my desk. Hops and grapes unit meal breaks. So at the liquor store, Christmas time, hectic all the time. We can't clock out for breaks, but they provide us with hoagie trays like that. So we would usually, if there's four employees on, two girls go in the back, we don't clock out, we have a quick bite. If it gets hectic again, we run back on. Constant moving, no breaks allowed, really. Holiday pay, that brings me to Christmas. Christmas is coming up. I'm gonna talk about Christmas a lot because I love Christmas. So holiday is a very appreciated benefit that most companies use in order for competition. So the ones with the most holiday benefits they get most of the more employees because they seem more, um, what's the word, more appreciated. So private and public employees, there's different. New Jersey does not specifically grant public employees paid holiday leave. Private employers are not required to close on any of the listed holidays. So, and pops and grapes. Should and then, that now? no, that's, we couldn't get him to stay still, so we had oh, to hold it. And the little hats, the little Christmas hats from Bath and Body Works. Um, so this is like Christmas, like I said. I had a whole list of labor of the holidays that um, New Jersey supplies. And then Bree's gonna talk about vacation. <clears throat> what can you have vacation? Okay, so like Makio said, I'm Bree, and I'm going to talk about vacation time, PTO, uh, family and sick leave, or family and medical leave, sick leave, for you to be Okay, and um, The first part of leave I want to touch on is vacation time, and not every employer has to give you vacation time, it's paid, um, and it's important to know because it's voluntary, so you want to know before you accept the position for a job. Requirements you can do. So it usually depends on your level of position for an organization um, or how many hours you work that you acquire vacation days throughout the year. So you could acquire um, up to a week or two weeks a year, which yeah, two weeks a year for vacation time. Uh, rollover days. So not all the time can your vacation days roll over until the new year. But um, you're given up until the first quarter of the new year to use your vacation time or until the end of the year to use them up or you use them. Uh, paid sick leave. So it's not a law, well it is now, but um, not every employer has to give you paid sick leave. Um, you need to use your PTO for that. Uh, but now New Jersey has a law that they just passed called the New Jersey Paid Sick Leave Act of 2018. Okay, so this was passed by Governor Phil Murphy in May and it was um, effective as of October 29th this year. And it allows employees to accrue one hour of earned sick leave for every 30 hours of work. And it permits employees to create policies that provide additional leave time since they found employees weren't taking their time off. Um, there's also a bank of days that employees offer. So it's a pool of vacation time, personal time, and sick leave. So employees have the freedom to choose how they want to use their PTO instead of taking specific leave. Um, another type of PTO is unscheduled. So this is for emergencies like a car accident or emergencies of visit, so you can call if you're not scheduled for a paid day off and you can get the PTO. And some organizations offer a PTO hardship as well program. And this is for people who go through hardships like a foreclosure or eviction or subject, yeah, 
has been um, an outstanding medical bill that they can't pay, so it allows you to pass out your PTO time to use for these types of um, like events. Um, it depends on if you're part time or full time, where you can receive PTO for the most part and receive some of the time. Um, I was a part time employee, so I didn't receive PTO or receive some time. Um, but they do not need to offer a new policy to do about that. So I was a per diem medical receptionist for Hackensack Meridian, and I worked at a pediatric office. Uh, since I was a detent, I didn't receive benefits or anything like that. Um, and if I didn't call out because I was sick, I was just didn't receive pay that day. Uh, jury duty. So this is important to know because not every organization has to give you paid time off for jury duty. Um, it is your right, so they can protect your job as if you have to go. But if it doesn't, um, if it's an inconvenience with your work schedule, you can ask you to from jury duty from your job, and they do not have to pay you for jury duty. Um, you, if you have, you cannot get excused for it most of the time. They will make you use your PTO. And another form of uh, leave is bereavement, and an organization it does not have to give you paid days off for this, but most of them do give you up to three days for immediate family members and a day for close family members or friends. Um, if, if they do not offer this day, then you have to use your PTO, which is a big time off as well. The Family and Medical Leave Act is a labor law that requires covered employers to provide employees with job protection and unpaid leave for qualified medical reasons. Um, they usually give an employee up to 12 weeks of unpaid leave, but they allow them to be fully insured as if they didn't leave. Uh, there are different qualifications for family and medical leave, and one of them is you have to have worked at least 12 months or a year with the company. It doesn't have to be consecutive, and you had to have worked 1,250 hours with that company. And other forms of qualifications are there must be 50 or more employees within a 75 mile radius. Um, you have to qualify for a sickness or the immediate family member. And if you have a child that's like childbirth or foster care or adoption, it comes for family medical leave. Um, so if somebody has a question on who exactly is a family member for family medical leave, and that's your immediate family members like a spouse, a child, or your parents, but it's not considered for grandparents or in law. Uh, and maternity leave isn't always covered by an employer either. You would have to use your PTO, or not your PTO, um, family medical leave if it's an emergency like bed rest, or um, you get paid disability for some of it, but most of them give you up to 12 weeks of pay for maternity leave. And next, we're going to talk about attendance, social media, leave, and job performance. Thank you, Ruth. Um, so I'm Hibber, and I'm working for the company that is our HR policy, so I'll be focusing more on the attendance, the social media, leave, and the job performance. Um, just before moving on, I want to tell you a little about myself. I am a junior, I'm from Williamstown, and I'm a HR manager. So to start off, let's talk about attendance and what exactly it is. Attendance is being present at a place, but attendance is not only physical. As a for workforce, attendance is also being attended mentally and socially. But if an employee will be absent for a whole day, they need to contact their supervisor as soon as possible. And of course, we're emails and emails are not accepted unless it is in your so, while talking about tardiness, being absent and tardy leads to discipline, and if the behavior continues, it ends up in termination. No call, no show obviously can end up in termination as well. And if an employee does not does no call, no show for three consecutive days, they are terminated, and it is considered voluntary. And the reality is that attendance affects our work culture. No matter how many people are in the community, whether it's five people or whether it's 500 people, the 
the way we interact with others to shape the company's culture. It is also important to determine what kind of consequences are applied for people that are late five minutes versus the people that are late an hour, so it doesn't disturb the work culture. So for example, I work at Ultra Beauty, and they have an eight point system over there. <coughs> Every time you're more than five minutes late, but less than 15 minutes late, you get half a point. Um, after 15 minutes, they call, and if you're coming, you get a point. No call, no show, it's five points, and after uh, accumulating up to eight points, and four years terminated. And there are three phases in the beginning as well, or part-time. So let's talk about social media now. Social media is one of those areas in the workplace that is always hard to control. It is still debated about how much a person can deal about their job onto social media while in the company and also if they have left the company. Where does that thing line really exist without being unethical to work the company? So with tech study millennials and generation B people in the workforce today, and for generation B people are the people that are born from 1995 and up, the lines between personal and professional have become increasingly blurred online. So it's really important to have social media policies in the workplace, whether we like them or whether we do not like them. And it's also important to remember that what you post on social media is there to stay forever. It is written in permanent ink, so it cannot be permanently erased. You may think that after deleting something from social media, it is gone forever, but it is not. In fact, someone might have taken a screenshot of it, and that means that even the reader post can go viral. And that's exactly what a corporate nightmare is. So therefore, it is really necessary to clarify the duties of social media. And it's also important to remember that all employees are ambassadors for the company they are working for. So if you post something online that you would be ashamed to say out loud or something that could haunt you in the future, you should think twice before posting it. Employees should educate their employers to reduce the risk. Employers should educate their employees to reduce the risk. Therefore, social media policies are extremely important. So for example, at my workplace, my GM had a tall via contract with social media policies in it. And it basically said that we cannot post anything about our workplace in it. And once we write the package, we have to ensure back with it. And the contract clearly said that if they found us writing anything negative or confidential about our workplace, we can get to it. So normally employees are allowed to engage in social media activity during work time, but that is that it is related to their work and it is approved by the manager. It is important to remember that while using social media, you cannot identify company clients, customers, and vendors. Company computers are always being monitored, so it is important to be aware of how it's being used. And again, as said before, employees should not expect any privacy while using their work computer, so it should be known that emails are also being blocked. All communications made from company equipment are subject to inspection by the company at any time. Even if something is deleted, it may still be in the company's archive system, so employees should keep that in mind. And attendance and social media use are both the kinds of activities at the workplace that affect job performance. Job performance is one of the very important things between employees and their managers. If because of social media use at the workplace or even attendance is affecting an employee's job performance, managers should have a talk uh, with the employee right away. So normally, formal <coughs> job performance reviews are conducted every year. Managers give out written performance stats on how the employee did throughout the year and also discusses what were the strengths and weaknesses of the employees during the year. Performance reviews are generally con concluded if the discussion, discussion is what is expected for the upcoming year from the employee. So for me, I used to work at Staples too before Ulta, and I had my annual performance review over there. So my GM basically called me in the office, and we had a direct talk about how I was doing there and my accomplishments at the company. So he had basically had other managers rate me and discuss why everyone did it the way they did. And my GM also asked me if I had any questions about anything and basically concluded with him telling me what was expected of me for the upcoming year and told me it lasted about 10 to 20 minutes, if not shorter than that. So an effective way of keeping things at the company running smooth is for managers to remember that performance reviews should not just be an annual thing. An effective manager or leader sees his or her employees at least once a week and gets to personalize with their associates. This keeps the employee having motivation and loyalty towards the company. So instead of just telling the areas we worked on, it's important to recognize the strengths of an employee as well, and he should be commended for that. Or he should. So there should also be incentives for jobs well done. For example, at my job, our manager gave us free full bags of makeup and beauty supplies to the person that got like, the most amount of rewards card signing. Similarly, we have incentives for uh, credit card signings as well. And not just that your hours increase and overall, just knowing that management is appreciating you is just a good feeling. So at the end of the day, all the policies provided are being followed and have a happy day at work. And if everything is running smoothly, maybe you can also call your work and your team like we do at our workplace. So management is key to keep the place running. So when your company has great management like mine, it will be sure the policies are being followed. And it's not acting like
So to summarize everything I just discussed with you guys today, we feel that we're discussing the tendency to be then we'll reach into social media usage at the workplace and finally how both of these plays a plus more affect job performance. And if there's one thing I want you to take away from this presentation is that to make smart decisions at work because you don't want to learn from that and see that you can't So finally we'll have Gab talk to you guys about some fun stuff involved in that code paycheck and Hi everyone, my name is Gab. I'm a marketing manager here at Rowan. Um, today I'm going to be talking about a couple of human resource management policies. Um, some that I've had experience with, such as stress and grooming, paycheck, conflicts of interest, and harassment and complaint procedures. Um, as soon as it's discussed job performance with us and you might not realize stress and grooming is actually playing a big role in the job performance. Uh, most jobs have some sort of dress code or a set of guidelines for how you should dress in the workplace. Um, even if your company doesn't have a strict dress code or a dress code at all, you should always follow the social norms for uh, workplace dress because how you present yourself plays a huge role in your success. And even though the modern workplace is becoming more casual, there are still some unspoken rules about your appearance. Um, so some social norms for workplace dressing are proper fitting clothes, well kept shoes, make sure not to over accessorize and avoid anything flashy. Uh, clean tool accessories are fine. Um, and all these suggestions are important, but it's just as important to make sure you're well groomed. Uh, having good personal hygiene is a must in the workplace because companies aren't going to want to employ someone who comes to work with <coughs> sloppy. And examples of good grooming practices are being clean shaven, having clean cut facial hair, uh, fresh breath, and a lot more. Um, my personal experience with dress codes was I've had a couple different ones. Uh, when I worked at the grocery store, we had a uniform, so I didn't have to worry about it. Um, and then I've had dress jobs where I've had to do business casual. Um, I currently work at a Hallmark store, so I typically will wear the apron over whatever I'm wearing. Uh, the next policy I'll be discussing is paycheck. These are um, what employees receive for their salary or wages earned. And they're usually distributed by the payroll department. Uh, the payroll department is typically either an accounting or a human resource function. Uh, paychecks are extremely important to human resource managers because they play a huge role in keeping employees satisfied. Other important roles of the HR department are maintaining uh, compliance with tax laws, recording new hire paperwork, and keeping employee files up to date. In the past, I've had at my jobs, the HR manager was also uh, the payroll manager, so there wasn't two separate jobs, it was just the same person doing this job. And our entire department for HR, payroll, customer service, and accounting was the same department. Uh, so things can kind of get confusing when there's no separation. And the payroll department being accurate is crucial to an organization's success. So people should always make sure to check their pay stubs for mistakes. I know I've personally had um, the wrong hours or the wrong wages on my paycheck because I uh, forgot to clock out or forgot to clock in and I didn't have the right hours on there. Uh, next I'll be discussing conflicts of interest, which Conflicts of interest arises in situations when someone is involved with multiple interests and they're usually in this position to benefit from it. In business specifically, it's defined as the potential for someone to become partial to a situation through their self, professional, or public interest. Uh, in the cartoon, the doctor is trying to get the patient to uh, take a medicine which he actually has invested in. So that's kind of unethical because he would be gaining profit from him taking the medicine. So it's always best to just avoid conflict of interest altogether if possible. Um, some common examples of conflict of interest are uh, dating in the workplace, working for or with your relatives, and working for two companies with the same interests, so companies and competition. And whether it may seem like people can separate the two, uh, usually they can't. Uh, I currently work with one of my best friends, and I've never had any conflict of interest, but that might just be my situation. 
Um, neither of us are in charge of one or the other, so there's no really gain for us to have. So I haven't had any issues with that. And I have worked with family in the past. Uh, the last policy I'll be discussing is harassment and complaint procedure. Harassment is defined as an aggressive form of pressure or intimidation. Uh, it's usually the form of continual abuse, insult, harm, or bullying. Uh, one of the HR department's main functions is to handle employee complaints about harassment. And there's various types, discriminatory, physical, psychological, sexual harassment, and retaliation. Uh, some examples are discriminating against race, religion, and gender, sexual orientation. Um, and then psychological, which is spreading rumors or bullying your coworker. So sexual harassment is defined as unwanted sexual advances, coercion, or subjective remarks. And people are just now becoming more aware of how uh, common it is in the workplace. And according to some recent research, about 20% of American adults have experienced sexual harassment at work. Um, employees should, uh, employers should always have a clear complaint procedure. So if someone is witnessing it or experiencing it, they know who to go to and what to do. And in conclusion, uh, today we talked about some of the many human resource policies. Michaela touched on emergency closings, overtime pay, meal and rest breaks and holidays, and Bree went over to time off, vacation time, the family medical leave act, sick leave and bereavement. Trevor told us about attendance, social media use, and job performance. And like I said, I just went over dress and grooming, paycheck, uh, conflict of interest, and harassment complaint procedure. Um, like Michaela said at the beginning, there's many more policies and just use the user all we have time for today. Well done. So what did you learn? What words of wisdom do you have for the rest of us about the presentation? Faster than you think. What else? Practice. What's that again? <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking in front of people is something that some people never get used to. And if you're not doing it quite regularly, um, even uh, Johnny Carson, some of us remember Johnny Carson, he was. Jay Leno, some of you don't even know who Jay Leno is, but uh, Jimmy Kimmel, I suppose. Um, Johnny Carson used to say, and he did it for years, he used to say he would uh, <clears throat> go to the bathroom and just like throw up, he'd be so nervous before every time he went out on stage. So it's something that some people get over, some people don't get over, even performers get stage concerns and stage frights. Nancy, people are, you think that the people are there to judge you. Michaela. I've been uh, theater in high school, and my director always said every year, like, if you don't have nerves before going on stage, there's something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like, the nerves help you, like, stay on top of your team and be aware of what you need to do. Yeah, I would agree with that. So you should expect, I used to try to say, don't worry about it, don't be nervous, don't be anxious, which I still say. However, you are going to have some anxiety. Hopefully you're not going to stay up all night the night before, but what can you do? You can be prepared. And that basically means, and I've tried, tried to give a structure here, you know, you've got 20 slides, 20 seconds each. 
Uh, you can practice for an hour just recording yourself on the phone and watching it. You can do that just for an hour and you've got five or six times through it. And then with your group, and your group members can give you feedback. Were you loud enough? Did you move or whatever the topic might be? Oh, I forgot to stop the recording.